So before we install release 12.2, we've got to have an operating system in place. And this entire demonstration will be done on Oracle Linux x86-64 operating system. In other words, 64-bit Linux. And we are doing the complete demonstration on a virtual machine. So what we will do is we will simply go ahead and first install Oracle VirtualBox and within VirtualBox we will install Linux operating system 64-bit and once that is done then we have got to configure the kernel parameters and once that's done then we will simply install Oracle eBusiness Suite release 12.2. It's fairly easy and I will tell you the step-by-step -step details. Now if you go back to the documentation that I have in the form of MD120, here I have clearly written what all you've got to do. The first thing you've got to do it is download and install Oracle VirtualBox. So simply go to VirtualBox website virtualbox.org and hit the enter button and here you go to downloads and within downloads you can simply download the first one for VirtualBox 4.3.6 for Windows host. In our case we've got a Windows host so we'll simply download this one. It's fairly fast and once you have downloaded then you simply click on this executable Windows executable which is fairly faster and simply click next 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 to complete the installation. So in our case we have already installed Oracle VirtualBox. So as a next step, you've got to create a new virtual uh, disk drive and for that to happen you have to simply open the VirtualBox and simply create a new VDI. So I will tell you how to go about it. So let's first go to VirtualBox. So once you have installed VirtualBox, the interface will look like this. And the first thing that you've got to do it is you've got to create a new virtual machine. So in order to do that, simply click on new. And here you can type your virtual machine name, any virtual machine name which you like. So I will say Oracle EBS 12.2.2. Okay, that's it. And then you choose the operating system what kind of operating system it is so in our case it is linux but if you have a different operating system in your mind then you choose a different one we are going to install the whole thing on linux x86 64 so choose this one and then at the bottom you can choose what flavor of linux it is so in our case it is oracle and within Oracle it is 84 bit. So by default if you see it defaults to this Oracle make sure you change it to Oracle 64 bit. Once you have done that simply click on next and then here you can configure the memory that you have within the server. So this is an enterprise server. So here um, what I will do for demonstration purposes I will make it something like you know 100 gig of memory or 80 gig of memory but for you 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 should give a minimum memory of a 10 gig for you to successfully install 12.2 but even with 10 gig of memory it will be very slow so the higher the memory the better it is so in our case i will simply give 80 gig so let's do one thing 80 Okay, and then click next. And here it asks you whether you would like to create a new virtual disk or you would like to use an existing one. So go ahead and create a new one. So hit the create button. And here create a VDI virtual box disk image. Or if you know much about the other kind of virtual disk, then feel free to use them. So I will simply go with what is there in the default and click the next button and then leave that as dynamically allocated and then again click the next and here you should give your actual VDI or virtual disk name and allocate the size of that. So my suggestion to you is for the initial installation you should allocate something like 500 gig okay. However you know it can be installed in lesser than that but you obviously require some disk space for transactions if you go around testing it and 
for that to happen it's better to give a little more and at the same time if you want to install um, more of components like IDM or you know uh, IDAM such components if you want to install as a part of eBusiness suite then you should allocate more disk space and then at the same time VirtualBox gives you the flexibility to increase the disk space later but to avoid all those hassles in my opinion you should give more space to start with and once you have given all this simply hit the create button and then what will happen is it will end up in creating a new virtual machine plus a new virtual disk so I have already done that over here and I will show you what I have done so I will simply go to the settings and once you have gone to the settings you have to check this checkbox for CD-ROM okay and once you have done that then it allows you to insert the CD-ROM right in your server CD-ROM drive okay so make sure you check that in terms of processor you can allocate uh, higher CPUs depending on what you have so I have allocated 24 CPUs it's a big processor uh, that we have but depending on what you have my suggestion is to allocate a higher number of CPUs probably something around you know 8 to 10 CPUs would do then um, you can leave other options as it is in terms of display you can allocate more memory if you like in terms of video memory but I think around 8 to 12 MB of video memory is just fine then in terms of storage you would see that this VDI which you have just created got automatically attached and so you don't have to really do much about it in terms of storage then come down and here you can give the networks okay so make sure you configure a network of NAT type if you are in Windows environment and you also configure a bridged adapter uh, and leave the default settings automatically it's going to detect the Ethernet card in the machine then host only adapter this is the one which is actually attached to the virtual box so check these three adapters and leave the default settings as it is okay once you have done that then the last thing you may want to do it is is to share a folder from your host machine into the guest machine you are installing so let's say this is my host machine so within that host machine you can create a folder say in C drive you can create a folder called a stage R122 and while you do that when you come over here you got to map it to what is the folder going to be on the machine so let's say if while you create a new one it's going to ask you which is the shield shade for the path and then what's the folder name it's going to be referred in the guest machine and then make sure you check this checkbox auto mount and make permanent and then you if you place read only then you cannot write anything to this folder from the guest machine so make sure you don't check this leave these settings as it is and hit the OK button so once you're done with that all you've got to do it is you have got to go here and simply start your virtual machine step which I have not explained to you is basically after you have created your virtual machine and your VDI or virtual hard disk you have to basically download the Oracle Linux software from Oracle website so all you've got to do is go to edelivery.oracle.com and download the Linux x86 64 release 5 update 7 or release 5.7 so let's go into Oracle website and I will show you how to go about downloading the software so the e-delivery website where you would be going to download the Linux is e-delivery.oracle.com slash Linux so simply click on this hyperlink and then sign in and accept the licensing agreement and hit the continue button and here choose Oracle Linux 
and then the platform is x86 64 bit hit the go button and the product that you've got to download is Linux 5.7 so scroll down and that's the one you would see Oracle Linux release 5 update 7 media pack at 86 64 for 64 bit so simply click on this link and here you've got to download the first one Oracle Linux release 5 update 7 for x86 64 64-bit so this is a ISO file and once you have downloaded it you must burn it onto a DVD drive and that's the DVD drive which you will place it onto the server to actually install the Linux in virtual machine the next step is you've got to install the Linux so how to install the Linux all you've got to do it is come here and hit the start button and automatically it's gonna boot from the DVD drive which is what you have given over here so as you would see here boot order so make sure you give CD DVD ROM as the boot order okay once that's done then all you've got to do is follow the prompt to install Oracle Linux and while installing Linux you have got to make sure that you install all these libraries or development libraries in the box I will show you how to go about it as we are installing it then you've also got to make sure you install these development tools and these system tools now this specific system tool Oracle validated this specific system tool will actually create your Oracle user automatically in the installed Oracle Linux so let's proceed ahead now and complete the installation of Linux in the virtual box